So yet another question on CAPM, the Capital Asset Pricing Model chapter, which is a core, core, core chapter within your Intro to Finance course. And in this video, we're going to look at betas and not only just a beta like topic, but a very specific subsegment of beta, individual betas. How do we solve for them for your undergrad course, for your graduate studies and your intro like level one CFA class? Now, the first thing that I would probably recommend you to do is to open, you know, get your formula sheet with you and then just identify all of the formulas you believe will actually match this question. It's a very important skill because then it becomes a very simple game of matching, really figuring out, okay, well, in this question, do we have any parameters, right, that we could kind of identify within our formula? And then typically, it becomes a game of solving for the missing variable. That said, let's jump straight into it. And let's kind of make sense of the prompt. And I'll tell you what our next steps from there. So you just started your job as a junior, I guess you just started your junior job at Goldman Sachs, and you were tasked with managing your new equities practices that focuses on investing in individual stocks. Now the fund has four different equities, PepsiCo, um, the risk-free rate, so four different types of investments really, the risk-free rate, Apple as well. And they all have different like dollar figures, different dollar values. One is for 19 million, one is for 76 million, one for 57, and then the other for 38 million. And the, the question was pretty nice. They gave you betas for two of these different stocks, which is, absolutely tremendous but two of them we don't know yet so that's going to be something interesting now the funds manager which is your boss he wants to achieve or she wants to achieve okay a beta for the entire portfolio that will be the same as citadel's largest portfolio in other words she wants it to be equal to 1.14 and then she asks you what should be the beta of apple all right now i can see how this is slightly ambiguous but Fortunately for you, especially if you've done a lot of the practice I have out there, this is kind of like a walk in the park. This question, it even ask you anything about the risk free rate, about the SML. It's really a simple question relating to this notion of a portfolio's beta. And at the top of the screen, I'm going to give you a quick little introduction to what you know, a portfolio beta really you know, looks like. So a portfolio beta can be written as follows, OK? It can be written as being literally the weighted sum of its individual betas, just like that. Now, for a lot of you, this doesn't really make sense. Like, uh, I remember when I first took this, I was like, oh my God, what, why, are we, why can't we just speak normal English? So I'm going to write this down in a way that's much more simple, in a way that's actually like digestible and something they could probably internalize slightly better. So the beta of a portfolio could be written in a like, Bites, like in a more concise way, in which we would say that the beta of a portfolio would be equal to the weight of asset A times beta A plus the weight of asset B times beta B plus the weight of asset C times beta C. Then three little points to highlight continuity essentially telling you that we would do this process again and again and again forever up until the last stock in our portfolio. And we're going to highlight this as being the weight of the end portfolio times the, port, uh, the beta of the end asset. So the weight of the end asset times the beta of the end asset. We'll go with that definition. So just to give you the last bit of like context that is required here is that if we had a portfolio, let's say, of two different stocks, we would stop our formula here. It would be done right there. We would just do the weight of the first stock times the beta of the first stock plus the weight of the second stock times the beta of the second stock. It's really as easy as that. And if we had three stocks, we would go all the way here, right? Notice how we're just adding one portion to our, to our, um, for, to our formula or calculation. Then of course, if you have end assets, it becomes very long and hard, but you'll typically have between maybe one to 12 assets in a question. And there's actually a trick to just look at either two or three, which if you look at our other videos or my other videos, it'll make more sense because it'll be pretty straightforward. That's awesome. And in this question, they're making it actually pretty easy for you. Remember, remember how I said that we always wanna highlight the stuff that, we, that they gave us and kind of see if they fit within our formula. Well, in this case, they did. They gave us a lot of information. 
And we're going to begin with the easiest piece of information that they gave you. That piece being that the data that your boss wants your portfolio to have is equal to 1.14. So in other words, the beta of your portfolio is equal to 1.14. It's really as easy as that. They told you what they want the beta to be for the entire portfolio. So all that you have to do is go back to your formula, look for beta P, in other words, the beta of your portfolio, and just highlight that as information that you know that you have. So here, we know we have this piece of information, and we know we have this piece of information. That's awesome stuff. However, we still don't have enough to solve for one individual piece of information, one missing variable. We're not there yet. So let's read through the question a little bit more and try to see whether we're able to find betas or if we're able to find you know, weights, OK? So what I want you to understand is that when they list you a bunch of assets, okay, typically ranging from you know maybe two to five, you want to understand that these assets within this portfolio, well, those are simply the different weights that we're going to look at. These the different assets are going to make they're going to essentially the different stocks are going to be a part of our portfolio. So we know that in this case, our portfolio has four different stocks or four different positions, and all of them will have different proportions of our entire, okay, of our entire portfolio. So what I'm going to highlight here is that this is going to be, okay, if I can maybe do my one. Uh, that's, that's very strange. I'm not able to draw that. There you go. But this will be essentially our entire portfolio. Okay. This is going to be our entire portfolio. And within our portfolio, I think it's obvious, and I hope you could see it, is that we obviously have four assets. We have Microsoft, which is one, PepsiCo, which is two, the risk-free, which is three, and Apple, which is four. You could call this A, B, C, and D if you want. So if we look at our formula from before, we could actually like maybe just write it down as being perhaps the beta of our portfolio would be equal to the weight of one times beta one plus the weight of two times beta two plus the weight of three times beta three plus the weight of four times beta four. And once again, if we play the game of what do we know, we know that we have the beta of our portfolio. And we know that we technically have the beta, right, for Microsoft, which is right here. We have the beta of PepsiCo, which is right here, so beta two. And we're missing, you know, some pieces of information. We need to solve for the weights, and we need to figure out what are these two uh, amigos really up to. Another thing that I'd like to do, perhaps, is just, once again, sometimes I forget, just tell you that we're solving for the beta of Apple. So that's our mission. That's like our grand goal here, OK? So it's always important to have that in mind. I'm sorry if I didn't mention that earlier. It's just um, I'm going to give myself an excuse. This is like my 10th question that I'm doing today. My brain is lost, but I'm here to help you all. So sorry if I'm missing just a slight bit of conciseness. That's on me. I apologize. That said, we need to find the weights of Microsoft, of PepsiCo, of the risk-free rate, and of Apple. How do we do that? Well, once again, fairly simple. So we know that this technically would be weight of one, weight of two, weight of three, weight of four. However, you need to understand, well, what is the total sum of money that was invested in this portfolio? You could simply do it by, essentially, I guess, I, I'll write it, I don't know where I'll write it, I'll write it here. So the sum of the money invested is going to be equal to 19 plus 76 plus 57 plus 38. I don't have any calculator. I didn't, I've never done this question before. So I'm going to write it down in my little calculator here, make sure I don't make any mistakes. So we have 19 plus 76 plus 57 plus 38. The reason why I'm only writing it as 1976, blah, blah, is because they're millions, right? We, we know they're millions. So you could just multiply it by millions afterwards. So we know that we're going to have $190 million in this portfolio. So it's going to be $190 million, such that, all right, such that we will be able to find the weight for every single one of these. So of course, if we zoom in, I'm going to write them in, in orange or whatever. <laughs> if we zoom in, we would have for Microsoft, 19 divided by 190. 
So in other words, we would have 10% of our portfolio invested in Microsoft. We would also have 76 over 190, which is going to be invested in our, um, what call it, in PepsiCo. You know what's crazy? I actually didn't even plan for these numbers to be like this, this good. So I'm very happy with myself. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how this happened. It's actually pretty strange. Because, oh, okay, okay, okay. No, now it makes sense. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I, I like these numbers. They're numbers that mean a lot to me. So anyways, but that said, 38 obviously would be 20%. And then 57 will obviously be, if I can do some quick math, 30%. Okay. So now we have the weight of every single one of these. So if we were to go in our formula, we would have weight, whoops, put this in yellow. We would have the weight of one, we would have the weight of two, weight of three, weight of four. However, there's still, there are still two unknowns. But what's funny is that one of these unknowns is super, super, super easy to find. And we'll have a quick conversation with you about it. What is the beta of the risk-free rate? What is that? Well, it's actually really easy to pinpoint. What is beta first and foremost? Beta, essentially, it measures the contribution of an asset to the market variance. So it measures to what extent does the variance of one asset contribute to the general variance of the market. But the risk-free rate, essentially, does not contribute at all at the variance of the market. It literally does nothing, okay? And for that reason, it does nothing, okay, to the variance of the market, we would say that the beta of the risk free rate is equal to zero, okay? So that's pretty awesome stuff. So we could say that this is equal to zero. Such that we also know this piece of beta. Now, the literal only thing that we need to solve for is beta four, the beta of Apple. So now it's like literally a walk in the park. I guess I'll write the solution, I guess here somewhere. So I'm just gonna copy um, our little friend here and we'll bring it down. So we know, and this is a formula for beta, all right? For the beta of our portfolio. And there's quite literally only one piece of information that we don't have. So this, I don't know, I'll write it in orange. So we know that 1.14 can be equal to 0 0.1 times 0 0.94, put this in brackets, I guess, plus 0 0.4 times 1.24 plus, in this case, you'll see why this doesn't matter, but 0 0.3 times 0 plus 20%, 0 0.2 times x, okay? A quick note to the y's is that something multiplied by zero gives you zero. So if you were on the exam, you would not even need to touch this, okay? But now I'm gonna skip a few steps and then we're gonna go directly to my little symbol lab. And we're gonna solve for what the beta, for what x is or beta, you know, Apple actually stands for. We're going to go on our symbol lab and we're going to figure it out to get out. So we're going to have 1.14 is equal to times 0 0.94. And then after that, well, during, I guess, I'm just going to make a quick sense check because it's my first time doing this question. So I could be wrong. You know, it's not impossible. All right. So I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to zoom out. And we're going to make sure that all the information I plugged in makes sense. So we know that the portfolio beta that we're seeking is 1.14. For me, I have 1.14 is equal to 0 0.1 times 0 0.94. So the weight of Microsoft and the beta of Microsoft. Then we have 0 0.4 for the allocated funds to PepsiCo. So the weight of PepsiCo times 1.24. I did not look at the risk free rate because literally something multiplied by zero remains to be zero. And then we have Apple. Apple, we are invested at 20%, so 0 0.2 times x. And with that, we could solve for x. And we get that x, so the beta of Apple, is equal to 2.75. That's so cool. 
the beta of apple is equal to 2.75. And that's some really cool stuff, to be honest with you. And yeah, so as easy as that, I was trying to find like some key takeaways. But this question really becomes a little bit of a breeze once you know what to do. And what I'm going to do quick is I'm just going to verify that the inputs are correct. So 0 0.2 times 2.75. We're going to enter that and we get 1.14. That's solid. We're happy about that. And yeah, literally as easy as that. So um, I'm trying to find some key takeaways. I guess it's because it's like the 12th video that I did today that I'm like, this, this has to be really easy. But what I want you to understand, though, is it's extremely, 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 extremely important for you to always highlight what type of formula you need when doing this types, this type of problem, okay? This one, we're looking for the individual, a very unique beta, all right? That was the beta of Apple. You had all the other information in the world. You literally only had to do one computation other than finding the weights. Simple as that. And I hope that this video helps you out. I hope that it gives you context on what you need to do on a exam like CAPM question, although on the easier side, really like on the easier side, but you never know. It's a good way to introduce yourself to this type of problem. And I hope that this helps. And if you go through Isma Help's website, you will find a bunch of resources and a bunch of like random interactive questions that like always auto-populate, which is awesome. And then if you go on YouTube, you're gonna find a bunch, like almost a hundred videos, I believe. Maybe not, maybe like, yeah, there should be a hundred videos like pretty soon on the channel. So that's awesome. So you really have an abundance of content to categorize as well to really feel like you have everything you need to do amazing. So hopefully this helps you out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.